What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another late night in the brew lab with me, Lone Fox, your brewmaster in chief. And tonight in the brew lab, I'm first going to come at you with some news and announcements. First of all, uh, Pro Tour Minneapolis just ended. I watched the entire thing. It was absolutely amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. I would like to take my hat off to Wizards of the Coast for making a paper event so watchable. Um, the way that the screen was laid out with all of the, you know, life counters, you could see what the opponents uh, had in each other's hands and, uh, you know, they had all the correct counters and tokens to put on things, you know, if a player cast a fable, the little goblin would come out straight away, the treasure tokens, the blood tokens, everything was just um, very, very seamless uh, and, and, as I said, thoroughly watchable, so hats off to Wizards of the Coast for that. Um, second bit of news with regards to the Pro Tour, Nathan Stewart took the event down. Not only is the current reigning cha world champion, won last year's world championship, also top eight in the previous set championship, and now won another one. If that does not make him the current world's best player at Magic, I don't know what does. Um, so yeah, uh, wow, congratulations to Nathan Stewart. What a, a final. I thoroughly enjoyed watching right to the end. Um, so what I thought I would do on a slight tangent is uh, bring you guys some uh, of the deck lists from the top eight of the Minneapolis Pro Tour event that just concluded. But because <laughs> like something like 80% of the decks were playing in some flavor or another blood tithe harvester fable of the mirror breaker shield dread and invoke despair i think we're all very sick and tired of a seeing decks with that those cards in it and b playing against them and whatnot uh from the decks in the top eight i've gone and selected the one that stood out to me as the most unique something that i have not brought on the channel uh, which also, uh, you know, top eighted a really big tournament like this. So uh, more on that once we jump into tonight's brew. But the news and announcements are not over. Second important piece of news. 1,000 subscribers. Yes. We've freaking done it, ladies and gents. Thank you all so much. Like, honestly, I like, oh, it was like my heart was pumping. I was just everything about the day when when we hit 1k was just oh, and now we've gone right past it we're sitting on one 1k and three subs uh i've applied for monetization uh you know this i hope is just a, a sign of what's to come on to the next big milestone which will be set at 1.5k uh, of course the 1k milestone triggered a giveaway i will be doing another shorter format announcement video specifically with regards to the giveaway so if you would like to take part just keep your eyes on the channel a little giveaway announcement video will be coming up shortly with what it is that you need to do to take part um and yeah so and, and that is my penultimate bit of news and announcements the very last bit of news which is arguably the biggest one and impactful um towards uh you know magic going forward is um for whatever reason <laughs> specifically uncertain but uh at least as far as wizards is concerned they've gone and put out a whole article about it standard will now not be rotating in september Rotation will come once every two years or whatever it is. So this September, you know, we were looking forward to things like, and I just kind of mentioned it in a previous point, uh, you know, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Blood Tithe Harvester, Bank Buster, uh, Invoke Despair, Shieldred the Apocalypse. These were cards that like, you know, and then I can add personally to that list, Wandering Emperor, Farewell, toxic cards that are really strong that we've had to deal with for a long time and bans were not forthcoming of late since me took massacre was banned it's been not much going on in the ban and restricted announcements i was honestly after seeing how like something ridiculous like 80 percent plus of the field was running those cards i just mentioned in, in in the black and red colors 
that I was expecting a ban and restricted announcements coming soon. Instead, we got this announcement. Oh, look, you're going to have to play with those cards for another whole year and a half. <laughs> so, uh, oh, that we don't have that, like, escape valve anymore. Like, oh, well, if they won't man up and ban these cards, at least we just have to wait till rotation and then <gasps> breath of fresh air, card pool shrinks down, you know, the usual rotation stuff. Nope, now we got to wait until next year, September. I am not a huge fan of this announcement. The main reason behind it, if you listen to Huey Jensen, who was up on the panel uh, live during the event to make the first announcement, and then if you go and read the article that came out subsequently, it's to help local gaming stores, um, you know, drive up numbers in their standard uh, tournaments, which are, you know, I I do not play paper, uh, and I don't think I ever will again. It's too expensive, and uh, I don't have the time in my day to jump in a car or motorbike or what have you and go to my local gaming store and spend the whole day there and everything. I just, like, for me, Arena will be, or, you know, whatever other versions of digital clients they bring out in the future for this game, that's going to be where my focus is going to be because of the, you know, the reasons I just listed. But I realize that it's a very important part of the game that drives, you know, sales for the company. Uh, which brings in new players, uh, which helps local gaming stores have, uh, you know, profitable businesses and so on and so forth. So I can see why they're trying to help out the paper local gaming stores standard thing. I just don't agree that this is the way to do it. By They're saying by having rotation, go a year on, the longevity of your um, you know, legality of the cards that you buy for standard is going to last for a lot longer, which makes it more affordable, which should drive up the numbers of paper tournaments in standard, so on and so forth. Only time will tell. Personally, as an arena-only player, this is like uh, just a big punch to the guts because I have to deal with cards like Invoke Despair, like uh, Wandering Emperor, Farewell, blah, 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 all those cards I've just listed over and over for another whole year. So let's hope that at least this will make it more more ban and restricted announcements happening when clearly like um, oppressive and overly dominant cards like blah, blah, blah. Maybe these types of bans will happen a little bit more frequently, considering that we have to live with them for so much longer. But that is it. That is it as far as news and announcement. Thank you all so much for bearing with me. Of course, if you're not interested in any of these things and you always just want to skip ahead to the various things, just look for the timestamps down below. Um, you know, you can skip straight to the gameplay footage, straight to the deck tech, straight to the, the end where I have my final thoughts and all that kind of stuff. So if you, if you don't like listening to me ramble on about... Uh, goings on in the magic world at the beginning of my videos just skip right ahead timestamps will always be available in the comments uh, in, in in the video description down below but now without further ado let's jump into tonight's brew so of the top eight lists there was uh, of course lots of rakdos mid-range which was the big bad of the tournament they happened to still be a copy of um esper legends there was also uh, and it almost made the cut for tonight's video autumn burchette's fantastic ores of mid-range deck um but i ended up going with david olsen's five color ramp because it's for, you know the the type of deck that i've put up on the channel the least i haven't been much for these like five color domain type things in my <coughs> in my videos of late so it was something that I was going to do anyway. And now that um, this deck has the fantastic pedigree of being one of the top eighters from a big event, I thought it was perfect um, to, to showcase this. And we will definitely be playing it in Mythic, in best of three. And uh, I watched the, you know, David pilot it at the event. So I feel like I know exactly what I should be doing here. And uh, yeah, a very unique take on, on this, uh, you know, kind of domain um archetype which is leaning a lot more heavily on the white mana because instead of playing the um uh, dra uh sorry dra what is it drag under or sorry, drag to the bottom the the black 
domain sweeper we now get to just play with sunfall uh instead which is the altogether better sweeper in my opinion because there's no like limit to what it can kill and it's not just kill it it's going to exile it and you get an incubator token equal to the size of the number of creatures exiled this way so uh if you include the one in the sideboard there's a total of three sunfalls in the deck uh, as well as two vanquish the hordes i'm assuming this was like done to um, mitigate any people playing like soldiers or mono red aggro or whatever which there were very few um, also lithomantic barrage as the main uh, sideboard tech against esper legends this is just a one mana clean answer to um, rafine uh, and then just four tyrannax where i guess you want to go because uh, this is a ramp deck and we'll get to it in a second but you could just like cut all of your Atalis and Atraxes and just put in like four Tyrannax and go like for a full just slam the crap out of my opponent uh, version of the deck. We've also got an additional Mirex in the side when you want to go a bit more controlling. Maybe you bring in the Lockdowns and the Vanquish the Hordes and the additional Mirex and you just try to beat the opponent with Toxic and little 1-1 one -one counters. Uh, interesting, interesting sideboard. I, th I found this deck to be really creative and, you know, unique. And uh, that's why that's why we're going to be playing it tonight. Just a couple of unlicensed hearses to deal with the um, you know opponents trying to reanimate things. And uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. Other than, let's jump into some games and see how your brewmaster fares on the mythic ladder with someone else's list that I have not played once. <laughs> um, best of three. Let's go. Going in blind. I like it. The only uh, experience I have of this list is watching its creator play it at the Pro Tour. So um, it shouldn't be too too bad. Fingers crossed. <clears throat> Just making sure my recording is recording, that my microphone is picking up everything nicely. The wait times have been very long because I'm quite early in Mythic this month and I'm also playing best of three and the time zone that I'm in means a lot of the Europeans and the Americans are either sleeping or just waking up or whatever. So I've been queuing up against the uh, diamond players a lot, but I've kind of tanked my rank sort of on purpose. I was testing all sorts of jank in best of one last night. And now I'm like sitting in the low, uh, like, I'm, I'm probably still in the top 1,000 something. 1173. But there we go. At least that's, you know, we're actually queuing up against other mythic opponents. And I have the feeling that we're going to be playing a lot of the Nathan Stewart deck, the, uh, you know, Jim Davis decks. Ooh. Okay. Rampy Rampy into Atraxa. Let's try this. I mean, there's four copies of Atraxa in the deck. Um, I will, rather than like do a full brew tech of a deck that's not mine, just play, you know, just play the game. And then we'll discuss what I learned at the end. Doesn't really matter which one of these I put down first. They both, they all have green in them. If I get an untapped source for herd migration. Here we go. So... We are um, definitely playing against Rakdos uh, Breach or Rakdos Midrange or Rakdos Burn. One of the, or Rakdos Reanimator, one of the Rakdos flavors from the tournament. I myself tested them. I mean, this this is this is the nature of standard right now. Bankbuster Fable, um, you know, Shield Red, whatnot. So, I guess we got Sunfall. Let's bring in a Plains. And then we just play out a Proving Ground so we can one mana deal with Fable here. Maybe the go there was to, I mean, it depends. You see, like, until we go into game two, I won't be able to tell whether uh, he was playing Fable to reanimate uh, things or not. It's going to get in with the double swing. Bang, just, I mean, this is why Bankbuster is just so ridiculous. K 
Okay. Let's hope he plays Shieldred. It's not Grixis, so there's no counter spells. We just sunfall the crap out of these guys. And then just sort of set up a bigger tracks a turn at some point. Looks like the opponents are having a little trouble with lands. And uh, the main deck only runs two duress, so maybe we don't get our sunfall duress now. Okay. That's just great. Honestly, we take 8, 9, 10, but then we sunfall. I would have preferred to sunfall a board with shieldred on it, honestly, but what can you do? Maybe plays out another two drop, but then it'll flip the glutton back to the trespasser. He may want to stay night mode. Cool. Oh, that's also a great card to find. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess when we are, you know, going into the sideboard for the next game. What are we bringing in? We didn't see whether he was trying to reanimate things. For all I know, this is just going standard, uh, you know. There we go. Four, five, six. Okay. Maybe. Go down to one. And we just probably lose the game. <clears throat> okay. So we get to play out an Archangel. In game four. And have a blocker. If he... He, he, he can't f quite... F uh, he's got a treasure. Oh no, what? Oh, that was stupid. Should have just gone both with the face. Doesn't really matter. He's anyway gonna... Okay. Hmm. All he needs is one removal spell and we're dead, so. Post board. Let's see what happens. Maybe we can... Uh, I think we just die anyway. We go to eight and we take four. I think we're just dead anyway, right? No? We survive. We, we go down to... Ooh. Okay. And that's going to be the game. I do believe that is going to be the game. I mean, all he has to do is nothing. We can't draw cards with Bankbuster. Sh shield red, guys. All right. Yeah, I mean, he just has to pass the turn and we lose. Uh, and he can uh, use the... There's there's nothing. There's no... Yeah, okay. Let's go to the next match. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just got destroyed by the, the deck that won the event. And who was playing... I mean, if we, even if we lose all of tonight's matches, I'm putting this video up on the channel. Because it's, it's just important to make a, a point about how ridiculous uh, this format is. <laughs> Mm. It's got 26 lands. He's going to be playing Shield Reds aplenty. So our main answers to that is Leyline Binding, Ossification, Sunfall. I think we just have to leave it as is. Like, there's nothing really here that's, like, incredible against uh, this deck. Right? I mean, I guess we bring in the Tyranax. Like, just bring in a one of? Is that. Uh, you yeah. know, let's, let's see what I can do here against uh, the big bad if I don't draw the cards I need when I need them.
Okay. Let's go with black. Wow. Little bit of a slower start from the opponent and now we are ramping oh are we ramping and he's brought in all of his duresses got our black land let's go with a red Dodging a few bullets there. No turn three fable, no turn two, whatever nonsense. I think we're going for the uh, herd migration. Hey, -o! all right. Game two. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> game three. I find the sideboard interesting because I'm fairly certain. I mean, they only published the deck lists quite late, um, like once the tournament already started. But I'm sure a lot of them were, you know, so clued in to the meta. You know, people like Javier Dominguez. I'm fairly certain he knows exactly what's cracking, and uh, he went with a deck like this. Uh, you know, like the opponent was, was just playing. So anybody who didn't make that choice would have prepared to play a lot of decks like that, and then therefore you have answers for things in your sideboard. I don't feel like this five color ramp deck. The sideboard feels more geared towards um, Esper mid range, that kind of thing, but. Let's see. Game number three. I don't need to ramp with the herd migration because we just drew a bunch of lands. This deck is just a nightmare to play against. We have nothing to cast. Whatever. We've got uh, not enough blue, but we've got enough red. Invoke Despair would be just the most punishing thing right now. I probably should have held that up. Okay, so this is the this is the Jim Davis uh, team that came with with this. Instead of playing um, four Invoke Despair, they have big score that ramps them into Chandra. Here she comes. You ready? Oh, all that. No big hits, baby. You get an angel, and he was unable to get one of our... But he, he got his own Atali. Now watch him get one of our Atraxes. Okay. Well, 
Well played, opponent. Well played. Well played. 2-0. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a swift 2-1. Uh, I felt like very bad against that deck. I didn't feel like my sideboard was very f well tuned to this matchup. Maybe I missed something. Well, please let me know in the comments. But like I said, I'm going to upload this regardless of what happens. It's not my list. Uh, I'm just here trying to showcase it and pilot it as best I can with limited information and practice. And um, hoping, honestly, to go up against some of these other top eight deck lists from the Pro Tour. What we just ended up playing against right there and then was the Jim Davis's team approach with the invoke. Uh, I beg your pardon, with um, big score into Breach the Multiverse and Chandra as the new top end with also a sneaky one of Itali in the list. Uh, very, very explosive, as you just saw. Honestly, happy to have gotten a single match out of that. I'm, 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 and which makes me even more impressed at David Olsen for getting into the top eight with this list. That seems more geared towards the Esper midrange, uh, uh, Esper Legends matchup than uh, the Rakdos midrange matchup. Hmm. Okay, this is probably going to be a diamond player. Once we go over the one minute mark, it's obviously diamond. Yep, Lord Oinside. What are these hands? What? What is that? <laughs> Wow. Just wow. No news, no information yet. Okay. Looks like another mirror. Or not another, but a mirror. Uh, so that taps for green. We've got another green. So let's go for white now. Double stomper is pretty bonkers. I honestly think it's better than the Vorak. This is just so far, I'm not sure why we're seeing only these colors. This is just pure ramp. Okay, mono green ramp. Swing for eight. Now, I mean, I just need to top deck one of my haymakers. I did uh, bottom that last copy of um, Atraxa, but we've shuffled since. That's pretty scary. No attacks, though. We have the mana to pay the four. Let's see if he has the, uh... Nice. No, uh, Tamios. <clears throat> Probably got another one of those in your hand. Wouldn't be surprised. Mm. 
nothing quite as exciting. Oh wait, no. Okay. Now he must block. We can flip this next turn. But if you only play one creature now, we gotcha. <clears throat> I guess he can still... Uh... Ooh. Okay, that's not cool. <clears throat> He can uh, destroy one of our enchantments. Okay. It's not entirely clear why you would do that. However, we just win off of the fact that you did not do the second mode there. You should have destroyed artifact or enchantment there, my friend. All right, so, I mean, what, just bring in another sweeper and cut one Atraxa? The sideboard feels strange, man. I, I, I don't get it, but fine. Five color ramp versus green ramp. Nice. They both produce green, so we can go. Yeah, okay. So far, same opener. Cool. He's going to try and uh, apply some pressure, get in for some early damage before my stompers can block, which is totally fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> we can both ossify something and ramp. Hold up the binding and see what they play. Okay, I'm gonna binding his um, land here. He can then sack the Kanker uh, Bloom in response. Okay, so this is non land permanent. Doi! I forgot this remains a land. Okay. Goes for the extra four on the foundry. <clears throat> but now I think we're just uh, dumping. Ooh! Okay, we're, we're, we're dumping a Traxa on the board. Oh, what a top deck. Um, let's go Binding, Archangel, Untapped Land, Bankbuster. Now we can gain some freaking life with the chump block on the Atraxa if he comes down with something crazy. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. No worries, mate. No fucking worries, mate. We still gotcha. Because this has uh, uh, reach, but I also have the answer to that 
in my hand, and you also knew about it, so... Sucks to be you, mate. This is his one way out of killing the leyline binding and bringing back the titan. All right, I mean we got there in the end, uh, but yeah, not a top tier deck. I was hoping to run into, but the previous match against Rakdos, we definitely got a taste of the micro meta that developed around the Pro Tour, and we got thoroughly whooped. On to match number three. We're about 35 minutes in. This should be the final match of the night. So hopefully ending on a victory and hopefully playing against something more uh, top tier like Grixis or whatnot to really see how this um, David Olsen list fares. And then we can uh, wrap things up and call it a night. <clears throat> so one win, one loss. <clears throat> The loss was against a mythic player. The win was against the diamond player. Not that it really makes any difference at this point. Anybody in diamond has obviously also got complete card collections and whatnot. Okay, approaching the one minute mark. Will it be another diamond opponent? Or will we queue up before the minute is reached against someone in our own uh, tier of rank? Hmm. Only time will tell. Sooner or later. Ooh, 59 seconds in. Hey! Another diamond player. Ghost Leech 231. What you got for me with your Liliana of the Veil? Okay, double green for the Stomper. Hey, this time it feels like a mirror. Aha! Yeah, this is definitely some kind of domain deck. So, cool. Vorak or your own Stomper. Ah, that's fine. Let's go get actual green or black. Black is the one missing color to make this go to one mana. Also, Archangel gonna be nice here. We can already do the six mana Archangel thing. Okay. The binding is the call. I bet you're going to be quite bummed about the fact that you did that before I drew my Atraxa. We just top deck any land now. Okay. I've been toying with this myself. Render inert. Uh, I've been playing like a... Oh, oh. I've been playing a uh, Jund Battles deck. Um, still not quite ready for the channel, but we're getting there, and Render Inert is a big part of that. I'm also playing Invasion of Chandelar. Five-mana battle that hasn't seen much play yet. I'm trying to break it, but let's see what happens. So, discarding a Spirit Sister's Call. Ooh, five-color battles. I 
I mean, we got the tracks the next turn to reload. And we just got rid of his one thing that's potentially going to be hitting the impending arrival of Invasion of Alara. And the fact that we can just go straight with the... I mean, you've got... Okay. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Interesting line there, mate. Boom. Here comes your... Lord and Savior. Not a very good uh, hit there. But still, uh, I feel like uh, getting around a second Atraxa in my hand, plus the one that's on the board, might be slightly problematic for anybody. Um. Five color battles deck with uh, invasion of Alara or not. I guess now you can sack this one, bring back the invasion, get all the ETB triggers. But even if he has the um, domain sweeper, oh my God. Ah, that does it. Noise. Okay, so uh, what are we playing here? Maybe some actual freaking graveyard hate, um, right? I mean, he's using the Spirit Sisters call. However, I'm going to just play it as is again, because that felt fine. And then we'll see if we see anything else from the opponent. Um, beg your pardon. While this is queuing up, I will be doing some... Uh, we'll see the book. I'm just doing some admin stuff uh, for my uh, day job. There's a technician coming tomorrow to fix one of my pumps for the pool. And uh, I need to send some money for the guy to come out at all. We need a third land that is green, please. Okay. This deck will be playing, um, the herd migration as well. Because then you can play the um, cemetery trespasser or whatever the. Oh, wow. Six, seven. Insta flip on the invasion. First time we get to see this interaction, which also means I can now ossify our good friend the Swift Spear here. Not too shabby. Wow, we just... I mean, look at how much mana we have on the battlefield. On, like, what was this? The opponent's turn four? I mean... We can play out this now. I can see why this deck got so far in the event. Admin taken care of. 
I can see why this deck did so well, man. Like, I mean, you, you get to seven mana easily just between the Awakened Skyclave or here, Invasion of Zendikar and Topiary Stomper. It's like, oh, okay, I'll just play a friggin' Atraxa on <laughs> like turn five. Uh, whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. David Olsen, on to something, clearly. Uh, you know, just go all in with the ramp. Stomper. Oh, wait, I mean, let, let's talk about this in the deck view so that we can uh, do a proper final thoughts segment. Jumping back into the deck with my final thoughts and overall review. You know, I always got to lead with that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, these guys are all just phenomenal magic the gathering players to even be present at a tournament of that size uh this was the one deck list that looked anything like this which is why i picked it he also made it into the top eight um four attractors and just ramp 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 into big stupid things between herd migration invasion of zendikar and the topiary stomper you get into that seven mana like so quickly and then you just have haymakers like um would love to hear your guys thoughts in the comments like when would you rather have tyrannix rex than atraxa i guess the haste close games out quicker you just cut all the Atraxas, bring in four tyrannixes and just like boom, 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 boom. also they're not legendary so you can have more than one on the board um why so many sweepers the only real aggro deck that made any sort of sense to prepare this many sweepers against was um, uh, Esper Legends. And, like, I don't think you even need this many sweepers against that deck like that. And Mono Red and Soldiers and whatnot were virtually not there, even though one copy of uh, uh, Azorius Soldiers did make it into the top eight, being piloted by... Uh, you Yuan Xiang, I don't, I'm gonna mispronounce his name, but a Chinese fellow. Whatever the thinking behind this was that I'm missing. Also, like, why a Mirex in the side? Just some cool choices. Um, I, you'll have to, you know, we'll, we'll have to speak directly with the creator to to get a full lowdown on what was going on here. But obviously, from the gameplay footage, very very powerful, um, and something that if you're into domain and ley line bindings might be up your alley um i definitely think that going domain heavier on the white side of things to play things like the archangel of wrath and sunfall instead of drag to the bottom good call because drag to the bottom tops out at maximum minus seven minus seven which yes kills attracts and you know pfft, uh titans of industry and whatnots but sunfall just doesn't matter if you've got tamio safekeepings or what your stuff is getting exiled and it just costing one more mana uh doesn't really bother a deck like this that runs uh 26 lands and all this ramp so yeah i mean that's really all i have to say a fantastic list uh, congratulations to David Olsen for uh, piling it into the top eight of a big event. Um, I will be seeing you all the day after tomorrow with another fresh, fresh brew. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, until then, this is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab signing out. Peace, y'all.